truth is very simple, very hard to find. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Going On. I'm your host, Tom D'Ambra. As always, folks, we're very thankful you take the time from your busy day to watch our program. My friends, a tremendous amount going on in the world and in our nation. And just to give some applause to President Trump, I am so excited that North Korea has finally agreed to come to the table, if you would. Now, you've got to understand, my friends, that the Korean conflict, as it called, because no one declared war, so they didn't call it a war, they called it a conflict. When people are shooting at you, when people are dying, to me, that, that is a war. But the Congress never declared it, so it was never declared a war till after it was over. Just like Vietnam, the Vietnam conflict. It was a police action, because the Congress never declared war. It wasn't declared a war till it was after it was over. So, but the Korean War, my friends, never was, never stopped. There has been conf uh, combat going on on the DMZ, and I know personally because uh, I never saw combat in Korea, but I know a lot of my friends that were in the Army stationed there um, that did have firefights. Um, there was tunnels, incursions, all the rest of it. But the thing that made North Korea obviously so, um, we'll say dangerous to the world, was that the technology that China and Russia gave them, of course, both of them countries got their technology from the United States, literally. But the thing that has, you've got to understand, Kim Jong-un, number one, folks, he saw what happened to Saddam Hussein when Saddam Hussein cooperated with international authorities and the United States particularly. His country was ransacked, it was balkanized, and he was murdered. Kim Jong-un saw what happened to Gaddafi when the leader of Libya, who was unbelievably beneficial to his country, I know that's not what you're used to hearing, but if you do the real research, you'll find out he had produced aquifers, better education, women's rights, uh, highway, all of it, free education for, for the, his, his children of his country. And, but what happened, to, uh, what happened to him? He was sodomized to death. Can you say Benghazi? That's what happened with the consulate there. That was not the embassy. That was the consulate. And what happened there was they were caught, they being the United States, giving arms to al-Qaeda to subject that country to revolution. I should say conquest. So Kim Jong-un says well, what, to himself, hey, why am I going to cooperate with these people when I can see what's happened to everyone else who has? That's how I'm looking at it. But what he didn't count on was a guy like Donald Trump coming up and for the first time, literally since Ronald Reagan, actually showing power and determination to him. So what's going on is that Kim Jong-un is saying, boy, if I cooperate, look what happened to past adversaries of the United States. So I'm going to fire rockets. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then we're going to come to the bargaining table under equal terms. And that's what he's done. But I applaud Trump because if Trump didn't show the manifestation of force, this would have never happened. It would have never happened. So I am very, very happy, and hopefully these, these talks are productive and fruitful in the sense that it will bring stability and some relief to the North Korean people. That is what we need to pray for, for that whole situation. My friends, people don't realize Seoul, Korea is 34 miles from the DMZ. 34 miles, that's nothing. And, and, and when you talk about modern warfare, that was nothing during the blitzkrieg uh, of World War II, 34 miles. So imagine what today's technology. Okay, let us go on. Now, uh, some interesting things have come out about the Parkland shooting in the uh, high school there. 
We now all know that the four sheriffs that responded from uh, the Broward County Sheriff's Office were all ordered to stand down. Ordered to stand down. Let me say it one more time. Ordered to stand down. We now know that the, that the Broward County Sheriff's Office was at that location of that young man's house on 29 occasions. We now know that the FBI had over 43 communications and or warnings about this young man. Who dropped the ball, folks? The FBI dropped it with their investigative work. The Sheriff's County dropped it with their investigative work and with intervening in the killing, in the slaughtering of innocent children who are put into defenseless zones to be murdered and put up for political purposes. And now we find out just this morning that the Sheriff Israel of, of the uh, Broward County Sheriff's Office is refusing to release the footage of the shootings, all the events tied into this event, because he's contradicting himself from the beginning of this. He said, the public should see all this so they know, understand what's going on. And now, whether he's embarrassed or whether there's all kind of lawsuits coming on, the one student who put himself in harm's way to sacrifice his body and was shot by five projectiles filed a lawsuit yesterday against the Broward County uh, Sheriff's Office for medical expenses because they stood down under orders. Unbelievable. Now, a couple of quotes here. This is once, uh, one from, uh, and again, from this shooting of all of them, you got to ask, Key Bono, who's profiting here? The resentment among Coral, County, Coral Spring officials toward Broward County officials about what they perceive to be a dereliction of duty has reached a boiling point at a vigil the night of February 15th where in front of dozens of others, Coral Springs City Manager Mike Gordrum confronted uh, Scott, uh, Sheriff County, uh, excuse me, County Sheriff Scott Israel. Source familiar to the conversation says that Goodman was very upset that Brown and County deputies had remained outside the school while the kids inside were bleeding out. Folks, they not only stopped the intervention to cease the shooting and, and to quell the threat, they actually stopped EMS from going in to give aid to the victims. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? They stopped EMS from going into the school to give aid to the victims. The Sun Centennial is also uh, going on here and reports that instead of rushing in, several Broward County de uh, deputies waited outside, blah, 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 we already know all that. Why? Because they were ordered to stand down. Listen to this from a former student. I graduated from Stone and Douglas in 2004. The sheriff of my county down here, Scott Israel, is a politician. He's a complete leftist. He is best friends with Debbie Washerman Schultz and Ted Deuce. He's not a sheriff. Of course, we read some of this to you last week. This one quote I would like to get back to you. Since winning one of the most powerful elected posts in Broward, County, Sheriff Scott Israel is hired from the ranks of his political supporters, building a community outreach wing with his critics, says doubles as a re-election team. A log of employees hired by the sheriff shows 10 workers were hired since 2013 into outreach roles and their salaries totaling over $634,000. Outreach roles, folks. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. I'm already going into too much about that, so I'm going to stop. But you've got to understand, my friends, that these shootings are taking place to take your guns. That's why. That is why. Now, I'd like to read a quote to you from Lewis T. McFadden. And you're probably thinking that how is it that I'm going to talk to you about the, a quote from the Federal Reserve when 
actually, it's the Federal Reserve, the bankers who are controlling every aspect of what's going on in our society. There is nothing, my friends, from your churches to your indoctrination centers to your medical to your government agencies to all of it that is not controlled by these international bankers. Nothing. None of it. This is from Lewis T. McFadden, Congressional Record 12595-12603. This is the 10th of June, 1932. So my folks, my friends, we, the United States Incorporated, Inc., went insolvent in 1933. Listen to his words. Now this is the chairman of the Committee on Banking and Currency. You think he understands a bit about the Federal Reserve Act. Mr. Chairman, we have in this country one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks. The Federal Reserve Board, a government board, he's wrong here. The Federal Reserve Board is not a government board. The Federal Reserve is a private for-profit banking corporation. Has cheated the government of the United States out of enough money to pay the national debt. The depredations and the iniquities of the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks acting together have cost this country enough money to pay the national debt several times over. This evil institution has impoverished and ruined the people of the United States, has bankrupted itself, and has practically bankrupted our government. Practically bankrupted our government. What happened on uh, March 9th, 1933, it went bankrupt. It has done this through the defects of the law under which it operates, through the maladministration of the law by the Federal Reserve Board, and through the corrupt practices of the money vultures who control it. That's what I'm talking about. This entire system was meant to put us into a state of debt, so we are enslaved to the debt, literally, to take all of our possessions, to gain control of the federal government, and not only to gain control of it, but to strengthen it, position to a superior position of the states. And they've done it. Now, what have they done since then? This is a, another document that we did a whole show on. And this is the document that was put together in 1962 because they were trying to format a crisis. And this is called the Northwoods document. And, and John F. Kennedy actually went down and fired L.L. Minister himself. This is one of the reasons why JFK was assassinated, one of them. Not the top of the list, probably the fifth thing. My friends, the Northwoods document was a document because the powers to be wanted us to go to war in Cuba. And then they were going to spread the war down through with our bases in Panama at the time, and then into Cuba, and they were going to spread it down through Central America and so forth, down to South America eventually. But what, how they wanted to do this was they were going to format a crisis, and here, listen to the things they were going to do. And if you want to go back and see this, we, we have this show at uh, KETV.org. This is quite old, folks. We did this show probably six years ago. But what they were going to do was, listen to what they were going to do. They were going to format riots in, in, in Miami and in Washington, D.C. Do you hear what I said? They were going to format riots in Miami and Washington, D.C., and they were going to blame that on Castro. They were going to blow up Guantanamo Bay, all the sailors and Marines that were there, kill them all, blow them up, and blame it on forces of, you guessed it, Fidel Castro. This is in writing, my friends. We read this to you verbatim. 
And mind you, this is 1962. How evil and depraved has it gotten since then? Then they were going to blow up an airplane that was full of college students, to use their words, on holiday. And then they were going to use open uh, aviation channels so everybody could hear it and pick up on it. And, they were go and the plane was going to leave Eldon Air Force Base in Florida. They were going to have mock funerals for the victims. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because this is in their own writing. Go online. It's called the North Woods Document. Key bono. Who would have benefited if this operation was not stopped by President John Fitzgerald Kennedy? It would have benefited the powers to be. Who would have paid in blood and taxes and corruption? the people of these United States of America. Do you get it? Can you say 9-11? Can you say the Gulf of Tonkin resolution? Because the USS Maddox, my friends, was not attacked. And ships that were attacked, like the USS Liberty, nothing happens about it. The Pueblo. Again, North Korean Peninsula, nothing happens about it. My friends, you've got to understand this. If you're going to understand anything, you've got to understand to ask, in Latin, qui bono, who benefits. Anytime there is a crisis, I want you to ask yourself, gee, who benefits from this? Who had the motivation? The availability of resources, the means or avenue to carry it out, and the means or avenues not to be detected. After all, we have 17 intelligence agencies that are here to protect us. They did a fine job. It was only 16 on 9-11. They did a fine job on 9-11, didn't they? And folks, if you still think that 9-11 was committed by 19 hijackers who couldn't fly a plane? How naive are you? Northwood's document, my friends, look it up. It was in their own writing what they're willing to do to the American people in that 1962. And we didn't even mention Pearl Harbor or the Lusitania, did we? because they were all the same thing. And we showed this to you. We showed you the Lusitania before it left New York, how the German embassy here in the United States, under orders from, from Germany, put a, fr a, a front page ad in the New York Times. I think it was the Times of the Post. Don't quote the paper to me. The, it was the number one circulating paper at that time in New York, advising the people not to go on the ship, that it was carrying munitions, that it was going to be cannon fodder, and that its track was going to take you right into the wolf packs. And for those of you that are educated by the American fool system and don't know what wolf packs are, I am not talking about wolves that can swim and sink steel ships. That was a term for the German submarine fleets. They were very effective. Operation Northwoods, look it up. Now, what is this? These are targets, and you can read it right here for yourself, put out by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They call them decentralization targets. Look who they are training federal thugs to shoot. Children pregnant women, and grandmothers. Folks, think of purchased by the Department of Homeland Security. Decentralization. 
Do you know what that word means? That word means that you are literally in a state of the target is the motivator, not the target itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're looking at a pregnant woman. You're looking at a child. You're looking at a grandmother. Are there any things in our, for people of morality, is there anything more sacred besides our personal loved ones? I am speaking as a blanket cause in our society. Is there anything that any decent man of morality would not do all in himself to protect in our society like pregnant women, children, and grandmothers? That's why they chose these three entities, because they are the most precious things, generally speaking, in our society. Do you see my point? Let us continue. This is a victim of the aggrievous, horrific aggressiveness above the law operation of the United States federal government and all of its underlings from the states to the counties, fill in the blank. This is LaVoy Finnegan. And we showed you a very good assessment, diagnostic breakdown of the murder of this man with his hands up, unarmed. How come the NFL players didn't do this for LaVoy Finnegan? Huh? Remember when the four NFL players put their hands up because of the shooting with the, uh, what was the cop's name, Brown? I believe that was his name. Don't hold that to me. The young black man that attacked him and tried to take his gun. They got in a big fight and the kid got shot. It all came out in the court. Mainstream media didn't cover it. But four NFL players came walking out. Got my hands up, don't shoot. Why didn't they do that for LaVoy Finnecum? Why? Because the powers to be wouldn't have benefited from that. Because it would have brought forth, gee, why are these four spoiled brat NFL football players doing this? And who's LaVoy Finnecum? Because God knows Americans are more interested in entertainment than knowledge. Here's the real victims of that whole thing. This is LaVoy Finnecum's family. They no longer have a father. They no longer have a husband. What's this? Yet, my friends, as I'm speaking to you about an incident that took place Saturday, I want you to look at these pictures. You remember this picture. We, did a, a, we brought this down before. These are our naval vessels that were dead in the water and attacked by a freighter that actually made a loop around to come back and hit it again. Here's the victims of that episode. These are the crew members that were killed. Should I say murdered? By their own government? They were killed in action of war because their ship was being attacked. They were murdered by the United States government. And you may ask me why. Because all the technology that made that ship dead in the water was unable to defend itself, was provided to our adversaries by the United States government. An episode took place this Saturday, my friends, one of the top electronic surveying slash cyber warfare planes, an F.A. 18 crawler, became dead in the air, if you would. And what I mean by that is the only thing that was operating was its engines, its navigation, its environmental control, its weapon systems, 
uh, its navigation, all of it. Every, the only thing that would operate on this plane was its engines. Now, mind you that two of these aircraft can digitally shut down the entire East Coast. It's one of our top sophisticated aircraft in our arsenal. Yet, an adversary given by the United States government, technology given by the United States government, particularly the Clinton administration and Obama administration, but yes, in both Bush administrations. See, and you thought there was a difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. Huh. Are you that naive too? This aircraft, my friends, was taken over. Taken over. The plane, the, the, the pilot had to divert to China Lake, which is a naval air station in California, and land manually. Think of that. Now, I want to say this. Obviously, these guys, pilots, my friends, I have a lot of respect for. When I was in the Marine Corps, my job was to aid them. I did crash rescue and search and air rescue. I used to go into crash scenes. Pilots are brilliant, courageous men and women. These pilots understood how to do basic land navigation outside of their instruments. No longer a requirement, as we read to you, in the United States Army. If you want to graduate Army boot camp, don't worry about it. You ain't got to learn basic land navigation no more. A compass? We don't need no stinking compasses. This plane, my friends, was taken over. That's the 12th incident in three years. Army Apaches. FAA Tingrales, the USS Donald Cook, all taken over electronically. All of them. The meanwhile, 45% of our fixed wing aircraft in the United States Air Force cannot fly because of missing parts. They are cannibalizing, if you would, from 45% of the aircraft to keep the other 55% up. And for those of you students that are, are have common core math, don't try to do that math in your head. You'll never get it done. 45 and 55 equals 100% of the pie for those of you with common core math, okay? Key bono, who benefits from the dumbing down of our children? Lieutenant Michael Flynn, an unbelievable patriot, the guy who was in charge of the DIA, the guy who came out and said that the Obama administration fund supplied and trained, no, excuse me, recruited, fu funded, recruited, and supplied Al-Qaeda. So what did the United States government do the next week? We started calling it ISIS, then ISIL, and whatever you want to call it this week. Did you see what happened to this poor man? This poor man had to sell his $895,000 house that he acquired after a 32-year career of serving as an officer in the United States military. He's had to sell his home for legal fees because of the witch hunt that Mueller is still going on. And this man pleaded guilty to saying that, yes, he did contact the Russians. And he did after the president was elected. And his job title was to contact the Russians because he was appointed to the Trump administration. You see, this is how it works, my friends. You remember that word we broke down before? Attorney. Not attorney. Attorney. A T T O R N. To atone. To separate one from one's property. 
that the attorneys have done exactly what they're supposed to do. They have separated Lieutenant General Michael Flynn and his family from their home after 32 years of dedicated service to the people of these United States, and that's a small you, my friends. The attorneys did exactly what they're supposed to do. Look at, the, look at the budget of Mr. Mueller. It's limitless. After all, the corporation he works for is $21 trillion in debt. Their checks are still good. And they don't have to worry about paying anything because you're the one paying for everything. So Mueller's budget is, the sky is the limit. See, that's what they can do to us. They use the just us system because we're not part of that just us system to put us under their thumb because we can't afford their budget. This is a crime against a patriot. And I hope someday vengeance is his. Now, this is New York City skyline, 1958. I want to read some things to you about what's going on right now, OK? This skyline represented our culture in 1958. Notice it's a Christian cross. Please take note of that. Even if you're offended, Take note of it and think of the morality of our culture in 1958 as to, compared to today. Breaking Daily Wire. Utah teen tries to detonate bomb at high school, flew ISIS flag. On Monday, law enforcement officials in Utah arrested a teenager after he brought a homemade bomb to school and tried to detonate it which authorities said would have led to a significant loss of life. Officials said that the homemade bomb started emitting smoke at Pine View High School, at which point the high school was immediately evacuated and the kids were sent home. A warrant served at the male juvenile's home and items were found consistent with the materials used to build the device. Police also said the suspect had been researching information and expressing interest in ISIS and promoting the organization. It was determined that if the device had detonated, it would have caused significant injury and death. The suspect, who law enforcement would not identify, was taken into custody and initially charged with manufacture, possession, sale, and use or attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction. Folks, I just read to you five laws that this guy, this kid's being charged with. The laws were already on the book, just like the laws against going in and murdering people are already on the book. You know what law should be on the book? A law that says you can't make a law to make a person defenseless. That's the law that should be on the book. The suspect, oh, excuse me, the same suspect uh, also allegedly took down an American flag at a Hurricane High School and replaced it with an ISIS flag. He, he spray painted on the side of the building, ISIS is coming. I'm going to stop here, my friends, for the sake of time. That wasn't happening in 1958, my friends. In 1958, we were bringing guns to school for gunsmithing classes and shooting classes, and nobody was getting shot. Why is that? Why is that? Let us continue with the state of the morality in our country. <clears throat> this is a tough one to read, my friends. I take no joy in this. This is from the state, South Carolina man who wanted to cannibalize children released on bond. 
Did you hear what I just, this is just the title. South Carolina man who wanted to cannibalize children released on bond. A man, police say, who wanted to cannibalize children after turning the child into a full-time baby maker and sex slave is out of jail on bond, according to court records. Justin Teeter Bensing, 36, of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, faces two counts of criminal solicitation of a minor in connection with a roundup of more than 40 accused child predators and sex traffickers, announced this week by the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. Greenville County Sheriff's Office, I applaud you. Thank you for doing what you should be doing. Bensing said in online communications that he wanted to cannibalize a child. Greenville County Sheriff Will Lewis said last week, however, the 14-year-old girl that Bensing thought he was taking to, uh, he was talking to, excuse me, was actually an undercover officer. According to authorities, he traveled to Myrtle Beach to Greenville to pick up the girl. Warrant cited by uh, Fox Carolina, Fox Carolina, excuse me, said Binsing had desired to turn a child into a full-time baby maker and sex slave and make his intended victim drink her own urine. The sheriff's office also said he expressed passions for cannibalism and bestiality. Now you would say this guy must be awful rich because. They must have said maybe like, what, a million dollar bond or maybe a two million dollar bond? Because you've got to think, this goes against all the morality of our society. This goes against humanity itself. After all, if you go and stick up a, a Cumberland Farms, which is wrong, you're probably looking at a fifty to hundred thousand dollar bond, right? So you've got to think, boy, this is just completely depraved. This is going to be at least a $500,000 bond. Come on. Bensing was arrested on February 12th and released from jail on February 14th. His bond was set at $10,000. $10,000. You have more than an ounce of marijuana on you, you're going to be paying more. Even if it's a medicinal marijuana, helping your body out. <clears throat> now what happens, this is, what, this is how politicalized everything is, my friend. If you were in charge of a police department, a sheriff's department, whatever, any kind of, uh, I'll say business, because it's all business, it's all about profit, it's all about keeping the little people little, but you would think that if you were in charge of your people, you would want to give them the best chance of coming home safely to their children and their family, wouldn't you? Doesn't work that way. Democrat sheriff refuses to give deputies rifle resistance vest due to immigration policies. In Texas, Democrat, why is it always Democrats? And I'm not a Republican, folks, but why is it always these bloody leftist Marxist Democrats? Democrat Travis County Sheriff Sally Hernandez is punishing her sheriff's deputies by refusing to give them state-funded bulletproof vest designed to stop rifle rounds because she refuses to hold arrested illegal aliens for federal immigration authorities so they can be processed for deportation. Texas Governor Greg Abbott announced in January that Texas would fund $23 million in grants to purchase new vests for approximately 450 law enforcement agencies around the state. Travis County did not apply for the grant because one of the conditions for the office's, governor's office required the agency to sign a letter confirming compliance with ICE detainer requests both now and during the grant term of at least one year. 
So they're not even saying forever. They're saying that for one year, you've got to actually hold criminals. The recommendations from the state, it is anticipated the number of fatal shootings will be reduced by equipping more officials with the Type 3 and 4 body armor. Well, of course. Then Texas lawmakers pass SB 4, which forces county sheriffs to comply with federal immigration authorities' orders to hold illegal aliens so they can be processed for deportation. Why would you want to do that? We don't need no stinking border. Folks, if you don't have a border, you don't have a nation. Why do you think that forts had walls? Why do you think your supposed property that you think you own has a border? Why do you think there's Wall Street in New York? Wall Street was built around a wall when they were fighting Indians, folks. That's where it got its name from. It was a physical border of safety and defense. Oh, and it goes on. Opponents of the law, including the sheriff, are going to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals so they don't have to deport, not even deport them, hold them, do their job. And I got a question for this, Sheriff Hernandez. Did you take an oath to the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Oh, but don't worry about that. We know what's going to stop the violence. Please notice I didn't say gun violence. We know what's going to stop the violence. The Democrats, they got the answer. Another Democrat's got the answer. Here we go. Democrat representative introduces a 20% gun tax and a 50% ammo tax. It's known as the Gun Violence Prevention and Safe Communities Act of 2018. The act amends the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 so as to require a 20% tax on pistols, revolvers, firearms, and any lower frame or receiver for a firearm, whether semi-automatic pistol, rifle, shotgun that is designed to accommodate interchangeable upper receivers. The act also places a 50% tax on ammunition shells, cartridges, reloading equipment, etc., etc., etc. That's the whole thing, folks. All they got to do is take all our money. Of course, they've already taken our money. We have irredeemable paper script for a medium of exchange. That makes sense to you? Take more from the people who already by law can't defend their children? Pay more? Let us continue with this nonsense. A Democrat, oh, excuse me, this is from Fox News. Illegal immigrants with sex robbery convictions along with those evaded capture at the Democratic mayor's warning. We covered this. A Democratic mayor's warning to illegal immigrants of an incoming ICE raid in Northern California has led to a number of illegal immigrants with violent and sex-related convictions. Convictions! Not suspicions. Convictions. What the hell are they still doing out on the street? Oh, I know what they're doing. They're collecting welfare. They're collecting food stamps. They're murdering your children. They're raping your women. They're robbing from you. That's what they're doing. Ki bono. Who benefited from this mayor? Who? Oakland Mayor Libby Safe tweeted out an impending warning of the four-day raid last week, alerting target indiv targeted individuals. Targeted individuals. This wasn't a sweep of the street, my friends. This was targeted individuals for intimate arrest and infuriating immigration and customs enforcement officials who say that many more could have been caught if they hadn't been warned. 
The raid would have led to over 232 illegal immigrants in the San Francisco Bay Area, 180 of which ICE said were convicted criminals, had been issued a final order of removal and failed to depart from the United States or had previously been removed from the country and came back illegally. The arrest included 115 who had prior felony convictions for serious or violent offenses such as child sex crimes, weapons charges, weapons assaults, and other past convictions for significant and multiple misdemeanors. I don't even have the time to read some of the particulars here. I've got two pages of particulars. You know, you know, ones of pedophiles, you know, the pedophiles. But that's okay. The mayor says that's fine. She's serving the people by keeping these people on the street, don't you know? Now we got these children funded by George Soros and other organizations such as Planned Parenthood. Hey, good thing your mother's kids didn't abort you so you can be completely played as fools for political means. And it's good thing, my friends, that you're still children or they'd have no use for you because nothing sells a crisis like children, you see. That's why Joe Biden emptied the schools of being, of, of being the, the ability to protect themselves because they knew all these sick people on these psychotropic drugs who have no morality because they're taught in a secular school system by 501c3 churches if they go at all, that we're nothing but a single-celled omega who formed from an ape. There is nothing treasured about life. So what's going on now? Besides all the funding from George Soros and Planned Parenthood taking these kids all over, the, all over the country, are you ready for this one? City of Baltimore to ship thousands of school kids to D.C. for anti-gun march for our lives. Well, number one, the city of Baltimore is number two in murders. It has a 74% high school dropout for black students in that city. It, you're not allowed to have a gun in that city, so you can't defend yourself. And now the children are going to be ploys. Ploys. Political ploys. As Lenin called them, useful idiots. So they can sell to you that guns are the reason that these people on psychotropic drugs with no morality are going into defenseless zones known as gun-free zones to murder your children, and you let you put your children in that kind of jeopardy, what's wrong with you? So they can be indoctrinated, so they can be forced vaccinations? This is what you take the risk of your children's life to do and paying a very high expensive tax to supplement this system, I will say. So the city of Baltimore has decided that we don't have time to take our dropout eu euphoria to take them to the museum to learn, to be educated. No, but we can ship them to Washington, D.C. to be used as cannon fodder at the cost of the taxpayers of Baltimore. That one makes sense to me, too. And by the way, what was our morality like when this picture was taken of the New York City skyline in 1958, huh, folks? Here's the New York City skyline in 2016. This is the goddess Kali, the god on the Empire State Building. Goddess Kali, the goddess of death and destruction. Look it up. The next article I want to read, uh, read to you is from Natural News, and the gentleman's name is Mike Adams, an absolute brilliant researcher. Brilliant. Now, just yesterday, 
YouTube took all of his material off of YouTube. Not because it was false information, not because he was caught lying, not because he was caught manufacturing uh, false uh, information or false results on some kind of test, like the CDC and FDA. No, because he's been exposing the CDC and the FDA. That's why. Naturalnews.com. Go to that website, folks. A lot of information. Teenage bo headline. Teenage boy dies from meningitis only after receiving the vaccine for what? Meningitis. A teenage boy vaccinated against all four strains of bacterial meningitis became ill with the deadly form of meningitis just after receiving the vaccine. Just months after, excuse me. Within 72 hours after contracting meningitis, 19-year-old Lewis Hilton lost motor control, stopped breathing on his own, and passed away. Folks, motor control is mind-body coordination. You take a fork, you put it to your mouth. This is motor, motor control, okay? Hilton was an active rugby player who was promised protection from meningitis when he got the quadrivalent vaccine last September. National Health Services confirmed that a deadly strain of meningitis ultimately overtook his body, sending him into paralysis and death. When he fell ill with flu-like symptoms, Hilton's father took him from work. He didn't have any purple rash, a sign of typical meningitis infection. The flu was ruled out because meningitis infection affects the spinal cord. Okay, folks, I am running out of time. I do not have the time to tell you about what this poor young man went through and how he was murdered for profit. Key bono. Who benefited from mandatory vaccinations in California or anywhere else? Let us continue. A little bit of international news here for you. This is from the Gateway Pundit, another site that was recently taken down from the internet. The author's name is Jim Hoff. Headline, go after the white man. We are cutting the throats of whiteness. Racist South African political leader Julius Malema. In 2011, South Africa leader Julius Malema told his supporters that the white farmer's land must be shared by all black Africans. He was then arrested for playing Kill the Boer. Folks, the Boer came from the Boer Wars. He's talking about the white man. Of course, I know you don't know about the Boer Wars in Africa if you went to the public fool system. They're too busy teaching you how to masturbate or try to figure out what gender you are at sixth grade, uh, six years old. I'm sorry. Why would we teach you history? Anyway, the South African Parliament yesterday voted to confiscate all land from the white farmers without payment. Excuse me, that was two days ago. Julius Banana victory speech. Go after the white man. We are cutting the throat of whiteness. Folks, if you get anything out of this show, besides I have a hard time talking about children being cannibalized and sex slaves, I want you to go back and understand this. One, you had got to ask, who benefits from these crises? Why are they allowed and fomented to go on? And number two, you've got to understand the power of prayer. We all need to pray for our nation, for our leaders, for ourselves, because we, my friends, are in a very dire straight situation. Things can be turned very ugly very quickly. And if you have your children in the public fool system indoctrination centers, the defenseless zones, as I call them, would you please do all you can to get your children out of there? and get them safe at home with you, and take responsibility for your children's education for once in your life. 
My friends, we're very thankful you took the time from your busy day to watch our program. We always close in asking you to seek truth, to obtain knowledge, and manifest... Can't believe We are all so blind I Can't believe We are all so blind I Well, the truth is very simple Very hard to find